Hi there! Just like you, I also watch art videos on YouTube. Lately I've been trying to get back into gouache, so I've been watching quite a bit of gouache videos. But I noticed something with these arty gouache videos that there's like some sort of a coffee brewing intro part of it. What what does it do? What 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 is it good for? Like I, I don't understand. I, I don't have coffee, I only have lemonade. Will will that work? Like, like this? What, was this good? Is Was this a good intro? Like, Anyways, today's video is about drawing cogwheels. Well, it's again ellipsis, but also how can you use them to draw cogwheels and how can you use subdivision? Let's jump into it. As you can see today, we're going to talk a little bit about cogwheels, which technically is just more ellipsis. I swear I'm becoming the ellipse guy of the of the YouTubes. <laughs> Anyways, let's just start with a simple one. So I am going to draw an axis here and let's draw an ellipse on it. I'm trying to do a, a perfect circle, but one thing today we're only going to do freehand, so nothing is going to be perfect. So this is our uh, circle. It is already divided. Let me subdivide it, these quarters into halves. So this is one and this is another one. And we're just going to do the, the, the simplest thing that we can do. We already have our nice division. Let me take a thicker pen. Not the, the prettiest cogwheel, probably also not the functional, most functional cogwheel, but it is at least the setup of how we're going to work. We're going to use the, the subdivision. So let's, let's do one with eight because four is just too, too, too few. Okay, I failed with this one, so I'm just doing a quick one here again. And just to control it a little bit more, you can see that this is definitely not equal with this. So what we're going to do, I'm going to switch to blue and I'm gonna subdivide them here. So I'm gonna make sure that all the blue lines are equal. So while the initial two are okay, after that you can just switch to doing your subdivisions here and it can give you a much more accurate division. There you go, this already is nicer. And at this point you probably say, yeah, okay, good, but this doesn't look like a cogwheel at, at all. That That is correct. It is actually quite hard to draw correct cogwheels because there's a lot of math in it. If you study mechanical engineering and if you have mechanisms within that, then at one point you will probably learn about what you have to do. And as you can see also on these images, there, there's, there's a lot of math that can go into it. So let's turn this into a cogwheel that looks more recognizable. Okay, so we have the divisions, but what we're going to do differently is first I'm gonna color in the inside of the circle. And now for the actual wheels or teeth or how you wanna call them, we're going to draw, this is something that, that the cogwheel looks like, right? So there, the next one is there. So we don't have to think about, or you don't have to do the side like this nicely rounded you can also just do a simple trapezoid shape so that's that's what we're doing here so we're tr trying to fit this trapezoid shape into this predefined little cuboid area that we had there and that and this one already looks a lot more like a cogwheel you can put a little hole in there and you already have a much more functional cogwheel. Now here, like what we do is you have this half circle and we divide it usually into uh, four pieces, but you can also divide it into nine. So we make sure like this is a third, this is a third, and then you can subdivide these. And then if you have an inner circle, you just make sure that you connect these 
with the center point. And then what you can do is just create these little trapezoid looking things. And then you will have three times four, which is 12 instead of eight. So you can do all sorts of combinations. Uh, and probably once again, okay, this is not hard. You don't need to teach us yet, but we can do the same thing in 3D as well. All right, and now we do the same thing. I'm gonna to switch to blue again. So we're gonna try and find the center line here, which I'm expecting to be that one and the center line here. So not center line, sorry. So I'm basically subdividing this, these quarters again. So this one and this one, and then subdividing again here, there and there and there. And then the same happens on this side, subdivision there, 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 have one here, here, and here. Okay, and now all we have to do again is just make these connections. Obviously, if I would like pull them all into the center point, that would help us a little bit because then we would see where these intersect our inner ellipse. Okay, so we needed these to have this, basically this interior line here. So all I'm gonna do now is just follow this interior line. Let me switch back to my black. So following this interior line, these will be my interior ellipses, comes here, this one, and this one. And then just like before, I'm gonna make sure not to do this, not to do this type of uh, cogwheel, but to but do this one. So all I need is, so I know it, it would come here, so I make uh, something a bit smaller, and then I can connect it back there, same here. I put it in between those and then connect. Same here, in between those. And because of perspective, you will have a little bit of change there. Same here, it goes a bit there. And then bring it down. Now, the interesting thing is this, you could either draw another ellipse on the inside. And I, I, let, let me do that with a different color. So I took like a peach or light pink. And basically I wanna copy this interior. So this one, I'm gonna copy down there, somewhere there. Okay, so now we can take and bring these lines down until they intersect with that one. And I forgot to do it here. Same, so you, you put the points in between the ones that we already have there. So dot, dot, as you can see, I always make the tips just a bit smaller, dot, dot. And here already we had it, okay. You can strengthen these lines a little bit and then just reconnect. And in this case, you just draw a, a parallel lines with this. So I know here, I wanna draw a parallel line until it goes there, same here, but technically it should nicely connect with the ellipse that we have down there. Here we're missing this line, so we draw this one down and we draw the ellipse and there's the connection point. And here you could see a little bit of the line and the rest I think you can't really see. So I'm just gonna strengthen my outline a little bit so it's clearer where my cogwheel is. And once again, these are not super accurate cogwheels, but they'll they will give you a nice approximation of uh, what a cogwheel could look like. If you want to interconnect them, first let's return to our 2D view, so I'm gonna do a big cogwheel and a small cogwheel. And so we have this outer circle, inner circle. You have to make sure that if this is A and this is B, the outer circle of A touches the inner circle. So that means if I switch to my blue now, let me draw in the axis. Okay, so this is our A and B, I need to make it a bit bigger, something like that. And now we know that it has to fit in here. What I'm gonna do here with B, just because it's a little bit smaller, I'm gonna construct the teeth on these lines. So it's gonna look something 
a little bit like this. And then from there, I will bring them in and connect them. Something like that. Uh, also, because we need a lot of space in there, I'm going to make it just probably a four. So it would be something like this. If you want to draw this in 3D, So this one I divided into only uh, six. And as I did here, I'm going to put the ends of each uh, tooth on the ends of these, well, not the ends, but where these uh, intersection lines are. So this is, uh, oh, this one is off, as you can see. This is a good mistake that I made. So it's very easy to fix. Like it should go along with this one. So our tooth should be somewhere here, here as well. So good that I'm, I'm making mistakes in my own drawings because at least I can show you guys what not to do. So the rest seems to be somewhat okay. Yeah, these seem to be somewhat okay. The problem was this. So when you have, these inner, oh, sorry, let me, let me try it like this. So we have an ellipse there. Let's say this, this is the halving point like that. And like here, then we know that if I'm going to draw teeth here, I think in English, I don't know if, if they're actually called teeth in English, but I'm just going to keep on calling them that. Then I will know to sort of follow these lines and not go totally crazy. So that's, that's why it's good to draw these intersection lines because at least the teeth will somewhat follow uh, the perspective and you won't that end up with something like this, which, which technically it, it seems almost like a tooth that is coming off. It should be like that, right? So that, that is a mistake. This is how at least I approach uh, drawing cogwheels and excuses for the abrupt change there. But I wanted to also show you how I do the same process digitally. And yeah, it is pretty much the same. Only difference is that it's much easier because you have layers. So I can do an under layer sketch, which I can then bring down the opacity and then I can draw over it. I can use my digital tools like an ellipse tool here in Sketchbook or other apps that you have. And once, as you can see, once my uh, face was done, I just copied that whole cogwheel face, duplicated it, created the back part and just did the connection lines in between the things. So it is even easier when you're working digitally and you have all these uh, tools. I do the same thing with the interconnecting cogwheel where I made a mistake and I fixed it with another extra layer. So you can even make more mistakes and, and fix them and, and it's not going to be a problem. So yeah, digital is not always, but sometimes a lot better. Uh, anyways, this is towards the end of the video. Uh, stay tuned because there's also an example of how to use this uh, subdivision techniques, not just in cogwheels, but also, uh, for example, I'm going to draw a rim, but I just wanted to take this time and uh, yeah, say goodbye because this is the last video that I am doing this year. Uh, there's going to be a couple more videos, but on Tuesday, I on Wednesday, I am flying off for vacation and won't be in front of my uh, computer for a while. So I want to wish everybody a great holiday time, enjoy your winter, uh, draw a lot, have a lot of fun, chill. Uh, but the most important is this, that you guys have a great time and see you in the new year. Bye-bye.